studio, there's this question, and, and that goes back to your 2018 that you came into this country. What attracted you to Ghana? What really <laughs> made you feel that this is, because there are other African countries in all fairness, yes. and even though we say we are the gateway to Africa, they say they are the destination when you get into the gateway. But what made you choose Ghana in the first well, place? For me, what made me choose Ghana was something very special for my life. Um, I came to Ghana seeking what I like to call spiritual discipline. Mm -hmm. um, and I met a Ghanaian man in, in the U.S. in Washington, D.C., um, and he helped me, I would say, how to hear and see beyond my own physical capacity. Mm -hmm. So traveling back and forth to Ghana with him, and he, what he really did for me is just gave me love. Okay. First time meeting a man, he invites you to his house and you know, offers you a cold drink and offers you food and then just begins to kind of pour himself into you. Now, once I, once I came to Ghana, it was a little different. Um, and I began to think about how do I help more African Americans get to Ghana? How do we help people of African descent touch the continent? My first time in Ghana was 1988. I know I look 19, but I might be dating myself, right? So Senegal was my first love, forgive me. And okay. I had traveled back and forth to Senegal, Mali, Guinea, and other countries. But when I came to Ghana, I realized that Ghana is a soft place to land for people who are interested in seeking their ancestral heritage, culture, and memory. Okay. It's an English-speaking country. And to be very honest, when you look at the historical framework, it makes a lot of sense for Ghana to be leading the way as it is. It's the first independent African country. Mm -hmm. It's President Kwame Nkrumah went to an historically black college and university. Uh, many uh, uh, smart, bright, and famous African-American leaders were involved in the African independence movement, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Langston Hughes. So Ghana is not new to its relationship with the diaspora. It's, it's actually something that it's done since it became independent. But I love the fact of what's happening now and that relationship is growing and it's pushing and leading other African countries to do the same. Okay, now I get you, Bounce. Uh, is that the same that your colleagues, your friends who also come to Ghana say? No. So, but is it dependent on the person or is there a commonality that drives everybody towards Ghana? You know, when you're outside of Ghana mm -hmm. in the US, African Americans, I think we need to realize, realize that the majority of the world media has done the best job as could to keep people of African descent away from Africa. Right. It's not like Africa is promoted in the media in the US and other places as a tourist destination, as a beautiful place, as some place where you can come and live abundant, as some place where you can go and claim your birthright. So what this has helped to do is shorten the distance, it's helped people move traveling to Africa from a bucket list item to a must-do checklist item for next year. So people are getting real familiar because we have this ancestral memory. We have this four to 700 year gap for those of us who can't necessarily trace our ancestry back to our home village. If I ask you where you're from, you'll be able to tell me, this is where my mother's from, this okay. is where my father's from. You still have a native tongue that you speak. Yeah. So it's an emotional, psychological, it's a serious connection for those of us who have been longing to come home. And Ghana has done a wonderful job in welcoming us, but there's still you know, 500 miles to go.